Kendra so today I'm gonna be doing a makeup tutorial for you guys and I'm gonna be using some new products that I've been wanting to try on camera for you guys of course I'm gonna be using some of my ride or die things that just aren't going anywhere the main thing that I'm using in this video is this Saharan palette by Juvia's Place and you guys are gonna see how I felt about it my thoughts this is the eye look that I did for it and yeah that's all I'm gonna say for now about it you guys will see in the video like how everything goes with the pigmentation and everything and Kelsey and I have used a palette from Juvia's Place before I forgot the name of it but it's in the green packaging the video was a get ready with us we did it together so if you guys are interested you can check that out after you watch this video with this palette so yeah I used this and I also used some new highlighters from Melt Cosmetics and you guys are going to see how I felt about these also, of course. And I also use this Dior Forever Foundation. I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. And I purchased this in New York and Sephora when we went shopping. Also, this concealer from Lancome. This is also new for me. So, you guys are going to see my thoughts on this as well. If you guys are interested in how I got this look and how I felt about some of the new products that I used today, then just keep on watching. Okay, so I'm going to start with primer. And I'm going to be using my Makeup Forever primers. I used to have these in the travel size, but Makeup Forever recently sent me the full size one. So I'm going to be using the smoothing one and the mattifying one in the middle of my face. So we're just going to start with that. I already, of course, moisturized my face because I'm looking very shiny. But I'm fine with that because the makeup goes on better when I'm nice and moisturized. So that's fine. Just gonna pack this in because when you're using a mattifying primer, especially if it's kind of um, like this texture that I'm using, kind of reminds me of the Becca mattifying primer. But I'm patting because these kind of primers tend to roll up in little balls and they kind of have like a residue sticky texture. So you wanna press it and it's more effective that way anyway. And this is the foundation that I'm gonna be using. This is the Dior Forever Perfect Makeup Everlasting Wear Pore Refining Effect with Sunscreen Foundation. That's a mouthful. But I got this in Sephora when we were in New York and I heard a lot of good things about this. I've read a lot of reviews on it and they had a decent color selection. So I'm gonna be using this today and um, I'm not even gonna allow her to use this once. I used it um, the day of the Mario Masterclass and I really liked how it held up on my face that day. So just kind of pump it on my face like this and the colors were a little tricky because when you're trying out colors at Sephora, I just realized something like when you first, some people just pump it and they try to see if it's their color. Um, but you have to rub it in and kind of walk around the store and let it oxidize on your skin because Foundations tend to oxidize and they don't look like the right color when you like first put it on sometimes So I had to do that, but I really like the texture of this. It's not too thick But it has a really nice coverage and it's been a challenge trying to match my foundation colors perfectly lately because I got really burnt in the Bahamas and That bohemian Sun is no joke. Like, I was so fried and burnt my skin was peeling it was gorgeous there though, but I wasn't expecting the sun to do that to my skin. Of course, I put on SPF and I reapplied. See, on camera, this looks a lot less neutral than it does in person. Like, I'm looking at it here, it's more neutral. I'm looking at it there and it's more orange. So, we're just gonna have to work with it for now. So, I'm just gonna blend this out. As you guys can see, it spreads pretty nicely on the skin and it has a nice coverage. This says it's shine control. So it's for oily skin if you're wondering, which I have. And it also has SPF 35, which is also really good because it does make a difference. Like right now my face is a lot lighter than the rest of my body because when we were in the Bahamas, I used my NARS skin tint, which is pretty much like a foundation with an SPF in it. Um, and when I took my makeup off, I can tell that the SPF did its job because my face was a completely different shape than the rest of my body. So it didn't really tan my face and the skin tint kind of helped protect my skin also. This foundation also has a light floral scent to it. It's not heavy, but it definitely has a distinct smell. But it doesn't linger, it goes away obviously. 
Oh, and the brush that I'm using is the Morphe M439. It's kind of like a fat foundation brush, kind of kabuki style. It's very dense, so that's why I like it for foundation. And it covers areas faster. And also the color of this foundation, I have the color, what color is this? This is the color 060, but I feel like it had a name when I swatched it in the store. I'm going to figure out what color that was. Um, it was a name though. I don't know if it was walnut, nutmeg. It was a name. I'll figure it out. Now I'm just going to move on to the eyes. I'm going to go back to the face later to conceal and everything. But I just want to go to the eyes for now just in case I have some fallout. And the eyeshadow palette that I'm using is the Saharan palette by Juvia's Place. And this is the second Juvia's Place palette that I purchased. The first one Kelsey and I did a get ready with us together on that one. And I really like that palette. But... I love this one even more because the shades are just bomb, if you guys can see that. So they have a nice variety of shades in here, and I'm pretty obsessed. But since this is my first time using the palette, I'm, I'm not going to dabble into the colors. Although, if you guys have been watching our channel for a while, you know I'm not like a rainbow eyeshadow kind of girl. Like, we don't do bright colors. And if I do do a color, I like purples. And I might do a green like this green right here is calling my name. But I'm going to stick with the neutrals today. I'm obsessed with these colors though. These are so, so pretty. So we're going to see how the formula is for these. Uh, I really like the formula of the first palette. So I'm assuming it's similar to this one. But first I'm going to prime my eyes with this MAC Pro Longwear Paint Pot. This is a new one and this is in the shade Groundwork. I haven't tried this one before but it's a little bit more um, like brownier and a tad bit warmer because I think I usually use soft ochre, I think. I'm just gonna take some of that on this kind of dense dome brush and apply that to my lid just to have a nice base to start out with. I'm also going to set that with some Laura Mercier translucent powder so that it doesn't crease, of course. It's kind of the point of priming my eyes. Okay, so the first shade I'm going to be taking is this one right here, and it's called Sokoto. And it's a very bright orange color. So we're just going to start with that one. And I'm using a MAC 224 brush just because it's my go-to blending brush. And I'm just going to start out light i'm not going to get too much at first because i don't know the formula of this but so far it's very pigmented and it's not too powdery which i like and i'm just going to start by building the color up and i honestly don't even know what kind of look i'm going to do i'm just going to go with what i gravitate towards the most So I'm just um, taking the same Sokoto color and I'm going to keep building it up until it has the look I want. That's the key to having like a nice blended eyeshadow look is to do little by little. And then the next shade I'm going to be taking is Jamila and it's this color here. It's a terracotta orange shade. It's a lot softer than this one. This is, of course, brighter, but I'm going to go with this one next. And the brush that I'm using is the MAC 217. It's my other favorite blending brush. It has a flatter side, so you can get, like, in the eye socket a little bit easier. So I'm just going to put that right underneath that color. Um, the thing that gravitated me towards this palette the most was how opaque like the colors looked and they were all really different from each other and it's really versatile it's a versatile palette the only thing from what I'm looking at that is missing is like a warm brown to me because there's no like chocolate brown in here yeah there's no chocolate brown in here at all so that's about the only thing that is missing and a lighter like brow bone shade, but I don't always apply a brow bone shade, so that's fine. Now I'm gonna be taking the color Chad, which is this black shade here, and I'm gonna be taking a tiny bit, like on the tip of this brush, because I don't know 
what kind of black this is. Some blacks are intense, some are less intense. So I'm just gonna apply that here. Like I said, I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, kind of looks like I'm going towards a cut crease, so we'll see how this goes. So I'm just kind of placing the product like on my crease area at first and then I'm kind of doing a dragging motion. And I'm not even going all the way in and then I'm just going to start blending, blending that out a little bit. So, and then I'm just going to take this brush 217 with the Jamila color and put it right above the Chad color. So that's pretty much what I did here. So as I'm looking at this foundation, I know I'm on the eyes right now. Um, even though I've only used it once, I kind of rushed when I did my makeup with the first time I used it. I did like the finish of it, like how my makeup lasted throughout the day. But um, obviously I haven't set it yet, but a lot of matte foundations that I already own already start looking matte as the foundation settles. And this one is still kind of on the dewier kind of look. Um, it doesn't feel like super oily and the foundation says shine control. So I feel like it's more like a satin finish. It's not a matte finish. So that's just my thoughts so far because I'm actually observing the foundation right now. Like I said, the first time I wasn't really paying attention because I was doing like a quick kind of makeup that day. Next, I'm gonna be taking the shade Senegal. I think that's how you say it, Senegal, Senegal. Yeah, this color. It's gonna apply that to my lid. Okay, so the shimmery colors have a little bit more fallout, but I expected that, so that's fine. I'm just going to apply that on my lid right underneath where I put the Chad color. This is a really pretty gold bronzy shade, but it's more on, on the gold side. Definitely gold. And I just decided that I'm not going to go all the way out. I'm just applying a little bit of that chair color mixed with Jamila on the outer corner. I'm just going to start blending that. And I wish I wanted to decide to do this at the last minute because I kind of already dragged some of the Senegal color further out than I wanted. But I'm just going to work with it. Because one of my biggest pet peeves is getting shimmery colors like mixed with my matte colors because it just doesn't look right on me. It's not very flattering. So I'm just going to try to work with it. Probably can't even notice it like here, but I can notice it and it's annoying. Okay, so let's just try to do the other eye a little bit better because that was an afterthought for me. So I'm just going to try to be more proactive this time. Okay, that was a little bit easier because you saw I stopped kind of like right past the middle. So I'm just getting some of that Senegal color because you don't want to do too much black unless you want it to look that harsh, but I'm trying to, not Senegal, Jamila. Yeah, I love these names. They're like someone's name or somewhere. I'm going to take a little bit more of the Senegal color, but I'm going to use like a fluffier brush like this instead of a super flat one. And I'm just going to place some more of the color in the middle just to make it pop more because I feel like these brushes um, help pack on product a little bit better. And the flat brushes are really good when you want to be more precise. So I like to use these flat brushes to apply and then kind of use these kind of brushes to intensify and again this is from elf so i'm just going to go ahead and apply some lashes before i start back on my face and i'm going to be using these lily lashes these are new and these are the ash comb ones this is what they look like on the back um i think she's a makeup artist i'm sure she's a makeup artist these are so so pretty so you guys probably can't even tell in the box 
because they have like a rose gold packaging behind the lashes there but they're really pretty they have like a soft hairy kind of look these are the mink lashes you guys see how they look on i'm sure they're going to be pretty and i always use my miamis so this is different for me Okay, so moving back to the face, I'm going to be taking some concealer. This is the Lancome Taint Idol Ultra Wear Camouflage Concealer. And I actually have the foundation for this. I've been using it for years. And I never thought about trying the concealer. And these were actually sent to us in a PR package. So I was really excited when I saw these because I was like, hey, I have that foundation. So hopefully it looks okay. Because Kelsey took the other color that's a little bit darker than this. So this is the color praline and number 10 so we're going to see how this goes just put a little bit on my hand so I'm pretty much concealing and brightening at the same time because it just makes me look more awake and I'm also going to use it to clean up the eyeshadow of course it's kind of thick it's a little bit thicker than the foundation from what I can tell so I don't even know what to use to blend this out to be honest I don't know if I should use a brush beauty blender not sure um, usually I apply my concealer on both eyes but this is kind of thicker so I don't want it to dry fast so I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out Okay, so it's blending with the Beauty Blender, but it is bright, so I'm going to have to work with it with powder, like I always do. This is definitely a camouflage concealer. Um, the texture kind of reminds me of the Makeup Forever camouflage concealer, um, which I do really like that one. It's waterproof. I think if I had like a tad bit of a darker shade, because of course they sent these to us, so we didn't pick the shades. Um, but I should have probably still kill these, but I don't even know where it is. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this just in case it creases, but it doesn't look like it's creasing now, from what I can see. I'm just going to leave that there for now and highlight the rest of my face. So you definitely have to work in sections with this concealer when you're working with it because it dries fast. But a little bit goes a long way. The amount I put on my hand, I'm just spreading the product with this brush. And that's good, so... And I'm just pressing the powder into my face. Um, it's getting a little dry, so I spray some of this rose water on it. This is the Herbivore Rose Hibiscus Coconut Water. Wait, it's coconut water. I like Well, it's rose and coconut, so. Yeah, I really like this. It's a hydrating face mist. And even though I have oily skin, this really helps my skin not get dehydrated. So, I really like it. And I'm just going to quickly powder my face with my Makeup Forever powder. And this is another tip. If you're really oily like me, I highly recommend patting in your powder first. This is an e.l.f. brush, by the way. It's just a flat top e.l.f. powder brush. I have like way too many of these, but the silver one is my favorite right now. Um, but... Pat the powder in first and then you can like blend it out. Especially if you have larger pores, if you pat it in, it looks more flawless and you don't get oily as fast. So that's good. So I'm liking how the foundation's looking um, with my concealer and powders and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna apply some eyeliner. I'm just gonna move back to the eyes for right now. And I'm using this Makeup Forever Aqua XL eye pencil. It's the black one. I'm going to go underneath the lower lash line with all the colors I used at the, in my crease and I'm going to get a tiny bit of the black 
So I'm just gonna take Sokoto and Jamila and just a tiny bit of Chad and go underneath the lower lash line. And I did apply mascara before my lashes, if you guys are curious. But I'm just gonna take some L'Oreal Telescopic and put it on my lower lashes. Okay, so moving back to the face, I'm gonna be taking my Broken Bronzer. And I'm gonna be taking that on my NARS Eda brush. This is my favorite brush to use with bronzer just because you can kind of do what you want with it. Like you can make it um, more natural and you can contour with it. So. It's my go-to. Kind of pricey, but it's worth it to me. And this is the only one that I have, and it's lasted for a while. Highly recommend the NARS Eda brush if you're looking for a brush that's going to make your life easier when it comes to bronzing and contouring your face quicker. Especially if you don't like to use creams. This is um, really good with powders. Okay, so for highlighter, I'm going to be using the Melt Cosmetics highlighters. These are their highlights. So this is a highlight slash bronzer but it's gonna be a highlight for me because it has a nice gold sheen to it. And this is in the color Nova. I really like these and the packaging is so pretty. I'm obsessed with this packaging. It kinda has like the melt um, font in it, so really pretty. Just gonna be using my Anastasia Beverly Hills A23 highlighter brush. Then I'm going to be taking the shade Gold Ore, and it's more champagne, a more champagne lighter shade. So I'm just going to put that on top just a little bit just to make it pop more. And these are really pigmented, but if you do a lighter hand, you can build it up. But that's with any highlighter. But I'm obsessed with these because they don't look like a chunk of glitter, but they're still on the extra side, which I'm in the mood for a lot of times. And then for lips, I'm just going to be taking my MAC Chestnut Lip Pencil and I'm going to be taking this KKW Beauty Cream Liquid Lipstick in the shade Kimmy and this is the the darkest shade. It's um, a nude set that it comes with but this one is my favorite. And this isn't a matte liquid lipstick, it's more of a, like a satiny finish. It pretty much feels like an actual lipstick, just in this kind of packaging. And it's really good for people who don't like the dryness of the liquid lipstick. And I really like this because it has a peachy undertone, which is my favorite kind of nude. Because I like to mix the peach and the browns together, so. Okay guys, so that completes this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really like a lot of the new products that I used in this video, like this palette. I'm obsessed with this. This again is the Saharan palette by Juvia's Place. These shades are just so gorgeous and I kind of want to do another look with this palette using the Kia color right here. So this green, I feel like it would be a pretty look. So you guys let me know if you want to see a tutorial with this Kia color because it's so, so pretty. The pigmentation for these is amazing. I knew they were going to be good, but I feel like this palette is a tad bit more pigmented than the other one that we used. And I forgot the name of that one. It's in like the green packaging and not this like coral red color. But Kelsey and I did do a video with that one. So you guys can go check that out if you're interested. But the matte shades are amazing. They're not too powdery. They're not like too, too pigmented to where you feel like you don't have any control. Like they're just perfect and they blend nicely you can build it up so i'm very pleased with this palette so so good if you are looking for a new palette to get your hands on i highly recommend this one just because it has some nice warm tones and if you're a fan of shimmers on the lid then i highly recommend this as well that zoya color is really pretty for every day so yeah it's uh shades in here that you can wear for every day and if you want to be extra also so and like I said, the only thing this palette is missing is a warm brown. I wish it did have a warm brown in it. But other than that, it's a really pretty palette. I highly recommend it. Love this. 
As for this foundation, the Dior Forever Foundation, this is really nice. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a new high-end foundation that you want to splurge on because this is not cheap, but it's a really, really nice foundation. And I feel like if you're going to invest in anything when it comes to makeup, you should invest in your skin because that's like the base of like the whole look when it comes together. So you want your skin to look nice and this one is really, really nice. It has a satin finish like I said, but you can build it up to full coverage also. So I like the coverage of it. I like that it has SPF so it's good for daytime. It has SPF 35 so I love that. And I highly recommend it if you guys have been wanting to try out this foundation. I really love this. But again, it's pricey. Don't say I didn't warn you, but if you like splurging on foundations, then this is a good one to have in your collection. So love this. Also, these highlighters from Melt Cosmetics are really nice. I highly recommend them if you guys haven't tried them yet. Um, this one is really good for darker skin tones, and this one is good for like medium skin tones, but I like to mix these two. So this concealer um, is very thick, so if you're not into a very thick concealer, I wouldn't recommend this. The Taint Idol Ultra, and even though this says Taint Idol, I feel like this is still thicker than the actual foundation. This is really nice if you're looking to cover up some imperfections, if you have really, really dark under eye circles, and if you're just into like full coverage concealer and you don't mind like the thickness. Once I blended it out with the Beauty Blender, it um, felt fine to me. But just when you first place it on the skin, it feels really thick. So if you don't like that, then don't get this. But if you don't mind it, then I highly recommend it. It does what it claims to do. So it is a ultra wear high coverage concealer. So I really like the coverage of this. So yeah, those are all my thoughts on the new products that I use in this video. And as usual, all the products that I use will be in the description box below with links. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.